everyone welcome back to my channel thank you so much for stopping by if you're new here thank you so much Medasi da abaha thank you for coming here akwaba and if you haven't subscribed make sure that you click on the notification button and then subscribe and if you're returning thank you so much for coming by again i really appreciate you and thank you for all my new subscribers i'm so happy to have you here anyway so today i have a story for you this is concerning buying a commercial property in ghana so i purchased a six acre coconut farm in ghana right and it's considered commercial and usually for commercial when you buy a commercial land or a commercial um, property that is not considered as you know personal or residential um, property it's commercial residential property or residential land is a leasehold land and you are you purchased it is your land but you are leasing it for 99 years I believe it's 99 years if I'm wrong please somebody leave a comment so that everyone can learn from it but I believe it's 99 years unfortunately I don't have my indentures with me so um, I can't I don't have access to it right now and also so when you buy a commercial property or commercial land um, that is a leasehold agreement for 50 years if you need more information on that I believe um, forever homes have a video on that and he explained how those two um, properties work so today I just want to share my experience um, of when I purchased a commercial property so I bought a commercial property which is an agricultural farm and that is um, a leasehold property as I said I was told about this um, property and this was about almost 10 years ago I purchased um, this land with my brother it's a six acre um, coconut farm I believe I've shown a video of the farm before if um, I if I find a clip of that I was insert it somewhere right next to this or above Boy, <laughs> Uh, Western, Western region. Western region. Uh, Hunter West. Hunter West, and this is my coconut farm. Hopefully, in the near future, we will turn it into like resorts and uh, uh, what else? Just like recreational center, banquet hall, that kind of things. That's yeah. what I have in mind to do. So, so help me God. Amen. Amen. Hey, in Okay, I'm trying to find someone. We're lost in this forest by ourselves, you know. This guy just left my auntie and I all here by ourselves and we're lost in this big forest. Because this big coconut farm and we don't know what to do. But I'm just going to stay calm and enjoy the journey. So um, I purchased this land um, about 10 years ago. So um, at the time, the, the person or the seller was in dire need for money. So he has a huge coconut farm or um, agriculture um, property. And he sold six acres of that land with me. So mine happened to be um, part of his coconut farm. 
um, and I purchased um, the land. So, and I really, my brother and I, I um, talked to my brother into like purchasing the land with me. We decided to buy the land and um, it was for a good price. You know, we got it for a very good price because the, the owner was in dire need for money. So, um, I purchased this land, I did my homework on it, and then uh, we worked on the indentures, which took some time. It took about two years um, or longer to finally um, get the documents in place, have the indentures completed and signed off, and then I took it to land. So I took the indentures to Takrati, registered the land, did everything that was required of me to do, got the stamps, got the signatures or the fingerprints of the chiefs and everything was completed, right? So I thought. So the land is in the western region, somewhere in the western region. So I have relatives that are not too far from the location. So they were occasionally, you know, will go there and make sure that, you know, is weed. They just uh, make sure that there's not too much weed in there. Or, you know, they'll just cut the um, weeds. I don't know, maybe if most of what kind of food, but anyway, I forgot how it's, you know, you say it in English, but anyway. They just make sure, you know, periodically that it's not overgrown with weeds, right? I was supposed to sell the coconut and then all I was requesting from them is to use some of the money to, you know, make sure that there's not too much weeds or, you know, overgrown um, weeds in the land. Just make sure that, that the land is taken care of and, you know, so that... Um, whenever somebody is walking through it, it's visible, it's plain, you can see who is walking through the coconut farm. So anyway, long story short, there's a relative that stays right across from the six acres uh, farm. So he was the caretaker of the land. All he was doing was um, making sure, I think actually he had someone come once in a while, you know, once the coconut is mature, there's someone that he um, made an agreement with will come all the way from Kumasi and then um, get the coconuts off the tree and then he would just give him, give that person a charge, you know, for the coconut and then he would take the money and all I wanted was just that the proceed from it some of them would just take care or just tilt the land so long story short again all the proceeds was going to him and him alone he was not sharing um, the sales you know with us he wasn't making an account with us first we op we had him open an account you know where he would put a portion of the sales um, in that account however he wasn't depositing any money in it we weren't getting anything from it he was benefiting all for himself all the money was just going to his pocket so we decided to take the responsibility from him because he was just benefiting from the coconut farm and he wasn't sharing the proceeds with us all we wanted is that you know the land is tilted and then there's eyes on the land that people know that this land it belongs to someone and it's not an abandoned land so we took the land from him cut our losses and then moved on so eventually I decided to protect the land by putting pillars around the land although it's registered but you know people don't know that it's registered so in order for people to know that this land belonged to someone we decided to um, put pillars you know every 100 feet or so put pillars around the land this way when somebody comes they know that clearly it's marked clearly there's pillars around the property and the property belongs to someone so i spent a few thousand dollars on investing in pillars you know so that i can put pillars like every 100 feet or so every 100 feet every 100 feet there's a pillar every 100 feet and then all around the six acres farm long so long story short again the property is registered i have the papers the indentures is all stamped and signed with the chief's um signatures and everything registered in the department of lands in takrade so everything is all said and done right and my so-called relative was taking care of it but mainly all this proceeds or the sales were going in his pocket so we decided to take 
the responsibilities from him and move on without him. And he wasn't happy about that. Although he wasn't sharing the, the, um, the sales, he wasn't happy about that. I decided to put pillars, invest in pillars around the six acres farm, coconut farm, because, you know, this way when someone come to um, do something on the land or even steal the coconut, co the coconut was, people were stealing the coconut. So when someone come to the property, they know that the pillars marks that their, this property belongs to someone and um, it's not abandoned. There's eyes on the property. So they will be more careful when they enter the coconut farm, you know, to steal the coconuts. Also, in addition to the pillars, I built a, I was building a small structure, a one room building. So one day I got a phone call and I was told that the pillars that I spent so much money on with my hard earned dollars was demolished demolished like they came and demolished the pillars right why you may ask so i was told that they were looking for the chiefs came looking for whoever was building the pillars around the property right and including the person who sold me the land they were they came looking for whoever was putting the pillars down so they went across the property where a relative was staying right and they asked him um do you know whose property this is because um there's issue on the land right so when they went there to ask him who it belongs to he told them that um the owner of the property is nowhere around he don't know his whereabout and so he can't really help them right so before they really demolished the um pillars they went to him to find out who it belongs to before they demolish the pillars but he told them he have no idea where the owners or the owner of the property is so after some time they just went and demolished all the pillars right they demolished my hard earned dollars and destroyed the pillars so when I heard the story, I was so mad. I was so furious and decided to do something about it. Apparently, I wasn't the only one, you know, whom they decided to take that property from. Even though the property is registered in the Department of Land, everyone that purchased, everyone that purchased uh, land around that area, around the whole township, you know, for commercial property, they were taking the property from them. So the chiefs decided to take it upon themselves to come and destroy the property because they wanted to take the properties from everyone that they sold the land to. Why? So allegedly the government wanted to compensate the chiefs, you know, to take that all those land, you know, all the commercial properties that they sold from them because they wanted to use those land for eminent domain or to build like some major hospitals and other whatever that the government chose to do. For hospitals, I believe in building um, hospitals because we that area really need a very well functioning um, modern hospital. But the way they went, they're going about it is totally wrong. So we reported this incident to the police station. And so we weren't the only one that this happened to. The chiefs were, I believe, were being greedy. So they decided, okay, for all those people that we sold these lands to, now the government wants to, you know, now the government wants to compensate us for it. For it. So we want to take the land back from you and then offer you another land somewhere, you know, not too far, but yet you know, not where the government want. So they want to offer us that, but we have to pay for that again. Can you imagine? So the case was at the police station and uh, so many people were there, people that were affected were there and, um, you know, to find out what's going on and why, how, how is this happening when they have registered this land in the Department of Lands. If there's an issue on the land, how come nobody told us about it? Why is it possible that we were able to register the land and now that the government is offering 
allegedly offering to take the lands from the chiefs and offer them like a huge amount of money for it they want to take back the land from you know the people that they sold the land to can you imagine i'm sure other parts of africa you know some people have stories similar to mine so as i said they decided to offer us another land and uh you know in place of what we have already registered however we have to pay for that one again but they would give us a discount for that i'm like no i'm not doing that my brother wanted to go for that but i'm like how do we know that after we pay for it this is not going to happen again i'm not going to do that they better give me my money back compensate me i've registered this land somebody need to answer you know some questions here because this is not right how can an entity you know department of lands allow this to happen oh so, you know a bunch of people met at the police station the chiefs and they you know we were trying they were talking about how to settle this matter the matter is still really ongoing but i didn't want to get another land no i wanted my coconut farm that i have invested in and um i've already registered i didn't want to go and pay again you know to go do uh, another indentures and go to the department of lands and re-register and go through this whole crazy process again i wasn't going to do that so i decided i'm not going to do that i want to get to the bottom of this and and also they better repay me for the property that they've destroyed so they claim that when they issue me a new land whatever they've um destroyed they will you know deduct it from the total cost of the land but i was not having that no i said no i'm not having that i want to get to the bottom of this whatever you know the government decides or whatever the department of land decides i want to wait for that to settle you know i'm not taking that property so that later on they can come back to me and say oh no this land belongs to who and who and who this is crazy you know but it still goes on in ghana it's about time that we start doing something about it you know this is what 2019 and we're still our laws are still not enforced you know our laws are still not implemented that is totally unacceptable in this day and age that we live in you know i know our country is a developing country but how long how long should we take this you know we need to get better we need to get better as a nation finally the um the case is in the um uh, chiefs in the the house of chiefs like all the um a hunter west you know all the lands all the chiefs in a hunter west are under you know the district of busia so um this the situation is really still there so eventually allegedly we were told that the government no longer wants the property or the lands anymore so everyone who owned the lands you can now have your property back can you imagine so then i'm like okay so what happened to the pillars that they destroyed what are they going to do about it you know how are they going to compensate me for the destruction of my pillars and then um other you know damages that they did on the land what are they going to do about it this case is still pending and it's really when this kind of things happen to you sometimes either you put up with it you let it go and cut your losses or fight it and then fighting it will cost you more money the lawyers you know will charge you so much money and you may not even get any solution you know um so sometimes for the sake of peace or the sake of your mental health you probably want to just let go but no 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 we're not having that so anyway the land is still now back to us again um, so my vision is to turn the coconut farm into like um a result you know? hopefully in the near future we will turn it into like resorts and uh, uh what else just like recreational center banquet hall that kind of things that's yeah. what i have in mind to do so so help me god amen you know somewhere like labadi beach or some resorts where there's pools you know there's beach maybe um 
less than 10 miles away but it's not on the property so eventually i want if i can get investors my dream is to get investors and turn that coconut farm into like a result you know or um, a getaway place where you have like a hotel you know swimming pools um, banquet halls where you can have receptions where you can hold like parties and uh, so many functions you know that can take places there you know whether reception uh, a mini golf uh, just that I could get away like a vacation spot you know I don't believe there's something like that in that area of, of the Western region so I can get investors you know to come aboard with me that would be awesome but with investors or not my plan or my vision for the land is to turn it into like a resort, you know, place something like Labadi Beach, you know, resorts or Busia Pleasure Beach, you know, resorts where people can just take a vacation or just come there and chill, you know, in the hotels for some time or have like functions, parties, banquet halls, or any kind of events, you know, we can hold it there. So this is the story that I have to share with you. Um, if you have any advice or any similar stories or any opinions. So let me know. What do you think I should do with this um, property? Today, let me know what you think. Leave a comment. And before you leave, make sure that you uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And hit the notification button. This way, when I, whenever I upload the video, you will know. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Medasi. Come again another day. I have more stories to come. The next story that I have to share with you is about this crooked lawyer that I purchased a land from. You would think a lawyer would be a good, you know, person to buy a land from because it will be legit. But this is the most crooked lawyer ever. So if you want to know more about this story, make sure you come back and, uh, I will have that story to share with you and this is a big time lawyer okay a big time lawyer so this is all I have to share with you I kind of condensed the story a bit because I don't want the video to be so long my videos tend to be so long and I'm new at this but I need to find out how to you know narrow my videos down because you guys don't have the time to sit there and watch me talk I hope my lessons my experience is helping someone even though, you know, not all of them is hunky-dory, but hopefully someone can learn from my mistake and make a better decision for, you know, make a better decision. So, information is good. I have so many videos coming up. They're not all on building in Ghana or buying properties in Ghana, but I'm sure some of the videos may be of interest to you all right. well so this is the end of the video thank you so much for joining me today if you haven't subscribed already before you go make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell this way whenever i upload a video you will be the first to know until next time take care of yourself god bless you bye